we are now going to find complex conjugates. And this is similar to finding conjugates of radical expressions like 3 plus the square root of 2, where we take the numbers again and we change their sign in the middle. And we do this for much the same reason. Remember that this gives us 3 squared minus the square root of 2 squared, which is 9 minus 2, which is 7. It's going to work the same way, but there's a very subtle difference. Notice what happens if I take 6 plus 2i times 6 minus 2i. Well, this gives me 6 squared minus 2i squared, which is 36 minus 4i squared. But i squared, by definition, is negative 1. So this becomes minus 4 times minus 1, which is really plus 4, which is 40. So this gives me a sum of squares as opposed to a difference of squares, because the i ends up being squared. And this is why we didn't talk about sum of squares before. You cannot use sum of squares until you have imaginary numbers involved. But the idea for finding the complex conjugate is to change the sign, but there's one particular rule. We want to change the sign of whatever is in front of the i, so that the i squared becomes a plus, and that will get rid of, will become a negative one, which makes it a plus rather than a minus. So if I have the term 3 minus 5i, then my complex conjugate is 3 plus 5i. If I have 2 plus 4i, then my complex conjugate is 2 minus 4i. If I have minus 3 plus 7i, then my complex conjugate is minus 3 minus 7i. And if my complex number is 3i, my complex conjugate is minus 3i. Always change the sign on the i.